good morning, everybody. Um, let me take this opportunity to welcome uh, uh, one and all who are represented uh, this morning and just tell you what an absolute pleasure it is to uh, have us reunite after our first outing. I think it was uh, two or three weeks ago uh, for the first of this uh, three part series uh, hosted by the Insurance Council of Zimbabwe in conjunction with Agribusiness Media. So I'm happy to announce to all of you that the same team is still together and uh, I'm delighted uh, we're in the company of people that I will introduce to you later, but just be assured that uh, whatever you experienced last time will indeed be repeated again this time, although we do have a different guest. So um, what we will do just as we start, we do have an official video that we would like to run, after which we will proceed to go into the actual program. Thanks very much. So we'll let uh, uh, Rawlings, if you are ready, uh, perhaps we can have the video run. Thank you. Insurance is there to protect you against the threat of financial loss caused by everyday events. It removes uncertainty by transferring the unknown consequences of losses from theft, fire, floods or accidents to an insurance company. The protection gained from paying an insurance company a regular sum of money is called a premium. By collecting premiums from many people, the insurer accumulates a pool from which losses can be paid for. We represent short-term insurance companies in Zimbabwe and are here to help you understand how they can help you with everyday insurance because you never know. For more information, call us on 0242-708. 031 up to 2 or visit our offices at number 4 Josiah Tongogara Avenue Harare Thank you Rawlings to you and team for uh, putting that together thank you Audra and uh, we will definitely be uh, speaking to those guys a little bit later as we go through the program so once again good morning to you all uh, please accept my apologies I talk about this as a three-part series at the beginning of uh, um, at the opening rather a few seconds ago but uh, this is actually an ongoing series so uh, you can expect that uh, as, as we roll out each one uh, we will be focused on different dimensions of insurance and how best you can protect yourself. So I mentioned earlier that uh, the only thing that is different this week is the fact that, that we are in different company. And when I talk about company, we have a special guest. Our special guest is a representative of the uh, agricultural community at large. And I say at large because he has extensive experience in the agricultural community. His name is John Chirindo. Uh, John uh, represents one of the leading insurance houses, uh, insurance and risk managers, uh, in fact, I would put it, uh, and as such, he has an amazing record. I have to use the word amazing, actually, because uh, it's truly outstanding. Um, and he is a University of Zimbabwe graduate, from which he has gone into various roles within the uh, industry, uh, representing different companies and different interests. But uh, most importantly, uh, the bulk of his experience is in underwriting insurance. So he is more than qualified to be talking to us today about the opportunities that are there for you as farmers to be able to take part in insurance while also explaining the benefits of what it means to be able to participate so that your productivity and indeed your business experience experiences the success that you desire. So um, talking about John, uh, one of the things I did notice uh, reading through his profile is that he has trained throughout uh, Southern and East Africa, including countries like uh, Zambia and Malawi, and also Uganda. Um, I think one of them was Tanzania as well, if I remember correctly, and many others. He has also traveled extensively throughout the world, attending uh, premier conferences that allow him to get a sense uh, of where things are going in terms of thinking when it comes to insurance and risk management. So it is truly a delight to have somebody who has achieved so much success in his career. And uh, John, it's an absolute delight to have you with us. Can I say good morning to you, sir, and welcome. It is great to have you with us. Thank you for accepting our invitation, sir. Good morning, Patrick. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. 
Wonderful. So good to have you with us, uh, uh, John. Uh, what I would suggest at this point is that uh, we go straight into your delivery. Uh, what uh, John is going to do is give us an overview that is aimed at enhancing our understanding of insurance and indeed risk management as it concerns the farming business. And uh, on that note, John, I say over to you and welcome again. Okay, uh, so good morning everyone once again. Right, uh, we're going to be discussing agricultural insurance with a special emphasis on uh, risk management, um, right? And uh, I think most of us farmers uh, are of the notion that, uh, you know, insurance is expensive. Uh, I'm saying most of us, uh, because you can see from my dressing I mean, khakis, uh, I, I do look like a farmer. Uh, and it's not just the dressing, I'm also a farmer at heart. I've been a farmer for the past uh, 25 years, uh, having worked in various uh, farming enterprises, starting with ADA, and also I have a venture uh, that I'm a, a project that I'm working on uh, in Mashonal and East Bay. So I'm also a farmer at heart. And uh, I think we do believe that uh, insurance is expensive, and I think rightly so. I will be explaining why some of the premiums that are charged tend to be high and what we can do as farmers to make sure that uh, those premiums come down. Definitely there is something that we can do and that is the risk management aspect uh, that we'll be focusing on. Right, uh, by definition, I think farm insurance means that uh, for a small consideration, which uh, I think we heard from the video, uh, it's called a premium. For that premium, you are able to be compensated in the event that uh, you will suffer an accidental misfortune. Right, to the va full value of the, of the sum insured, right? So for something like 100,000, an amount of 100,000, maybe it could be a crop like tobacco, uh, you are covered by paying a premium of sometimes even uh, $500, which would be about 0.5% uh, if it's a field to flow cover, which some of you tobacco farmers may, uh, may know, right? And, uh, Insurance covers a, a, a wide, very wide scope uh, of, uh, of, of, of things. Uh, we, we know crops is the dominant one. And these crops in Zimbabwe is mainly field crops uh, of commercial interest, which means that those crops that are, you are producing mainly to sell, not subsistence crops. So most of the field crops that are grown in Zimbabwe would, would be insurable. And we also now ventured into other horticulture crops, uh, including uh, greenhouse crops, um, or in addition to those uh, traditional fruit crops. Uh, those are also insurable. Then you can also insure livestock. And by livestock, we mean mainly domesticated animals. These include uh, things like cattle, you know, goats, uh, sheep, uh, poultry, and so on. You can also insure farm equipment, your tractors, uh, processing equipment, uh, your farm buildings, your barns, your houses even, your farm houses, uh, and some sheds. You can insure farm stocks, uh, your fertilizers, and even your commodities after harvest uh, that you would you'd have stored in your sheds. You can insure physical infrastructure such as dams, uh, and you can also insure your staff uh, against uh, any accidents that may okay. Um, we are aware that uh, sometimes during planting, especially if we're using those uh, uh, planters with gears and chains, uh, and uh, you have uh, people riding on those uh, planters just to check that your, your planters are not blocked and they're dropping the seed correctly, someone can get caught up in those chains and can suffer, you know, uh, injury. And uh, there are products to protect those uh, workers against those injuries. And, and, and make sure they're treated and they're compensated. Then you also have liability insurance, whereby you know third parties can 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 maybe uh, you know be affected by chemicals that you would have applied on your crop, uh, or maybe during a, some operation a passerby is uh, you know is in the farm and uh, gets knocked down by a tractor and things like that. Those liabilities can also be covered. So you can have uh, policies that will cover each of these individually, or you can have a cocktail where most of these uh, or all of them are covered. But that would be the farm comprehensive uh, insurance policy. Uh, 
right? Uh, we'll just uh, briefly go through why it's so important that we, we have insurance. I know some of us may, may, may not have, uh, you know, insurance policies because maybe we think they're expensive, but uh, in the next couple of slides, we'll try to explain why it's, it is important that we, we do have uh, something to fall back on in the event that we, we lose our crops. Of course, in Zimbabwe, you know, agriculture being the backbone of the, or the mainstay of the economy and accounting for over 25% of GDP, uh, contributing 75% of merchandise exports, and also being a source of livelihood for over 80% of Zimbabwe's population. It is important that uh, there has to be security mechanisms to protect farmers in the event that uh, uh, a loss is suffered. And uh, smallholder farmers characterize Zimbabwe's agriculture and they, are mainly, they mainly practice dryland cropping. And uh, by dryland cropping, we mean this, the crop is not irrigated, which leaves it vulnerable to things like drought and even excessive rainfall because the farmers have to wait for the season to start before they plant. And uh, you know, around December, January, you can experience a lot of rains like we did last uh, season. And then the crop uh, is affected and the insurance is there to cover again losses that are, will arise as a result of that. And also income stability from agriculture insurance encourages farmers to access credit. Yeah, you know, if you have your policy, a livestock policy, you can actually approach banks and use that as a security to, to access credit from banks. And also there's the peace of mind that you in the event that your crop uh, suffers some damage, uh, you will get, uh, you know, uh, the, the value that would have been insured. And uh, therefore, if you are paying some installments from, for some equipment that you would have purchased, it means that you, you have the peace of mind to know that, no, I can get these tractors, I can buy these tractors, I can buy these harvesters because if my crop gets damaged, then I'll have insurance to assist me to be able to pay the installments that will fall due for those equipment that you would have acquired. So, you know, farming is a very expensive um, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the inputs, the value of the inputs that go into establishing a crop. Uh, for tobacco, this can be as high as 6,000 US dollars per hectare. And from that uh, illustrated picture in, in, in the slide, you can see at the top there, there's a, almost a mature crop, almost ready for harvesting. And uh, in the bottom part, you can see, I think this picture was taken from almost the same point. You can see what can happen overnight, right? In just a matter of a few minutes, if the hail strikes, you lose the entire crop, right? And uh, if you have maybe surrendered the house and security for a, for a loan from a, from a bank to be able to put up this crop and maybe it's 50 hectares and it's all gets, it all gets destroyed like that then you may end up you know, losing uh, your, your, your security. And uh, it's uh, very important that uh, maybe if you have insurance then, then uh, you, you know that uh, your, 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 your investment is safe. So the capital requirement of farming creates a poverty trap in the even the event of a loss. There's also the issue of weather variability and unpredictability, right? Uh, we, we do have forecast nowadays, but uh, you know, uh, you do still experience, uh, you, you experience these, uh, you know, spells of maybe excessive rainfall, uh, the drought and so on. And it's difficult to plan because uh, all the focus that we get uh, maybe uh, for, the, for a few weeks, uh, you know, at a time. And uh, because your crop is for a season long, which can be maybe four months or even six months, you, you then put up a crop and because the weather, and if the weather changes, then you end up uh, 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 or losing, you could end up losing uh, the crop. Then also increased frequency and severity of natural disasters. We know about cyclone Idai, Idai, Idai which uh, hit uh, most parts of, uh, of Manika land and some parts of Mashana land east a few years ago. Yeah, so that's linked to climate change. And uh, again, our crops may be damaged. Increased investment in farming, you know, the equipment that we have been talking about does not come cheap. And um, uh, you, 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 you need to, 
to make sure that uh, where you have a crop and you have acquired this equipment and you are paying installments, in the event that something happens, you are still have your insurance to fall back on to be able to pay those installments which fall due. And also specialization in farming. It's like you are, as a farmer, you have put all your eggs in one basket. You may be concentrating on poultry, you may be concentrating on uh, uh, some uh, market gardening ventures, uh, or maybe orchards. And then if a uh, crop is affected by disease or some other peril, then you have no other alternative sources of income. Then you, you, you def definitely need to make sure that uh, that investment, that project you have is protected. So again, there is uh, increased disease exposure in boundaryless countries, the movement of uh, free movement of individuals uh, across boundaries. What means that there is a chance someone can bring in uh, from another country some disease causing organism, which can then uh, be transmitted to if it's livestock uh, or even uh, your crop. We know about, some of us know about tuta uh, absoluta which is a disease that's very common in uh, solanaceous crops like tomatoes and even your tobacco. And uh, it can cause a lot of damage. We also know about the fall army worm, which we did not have a couple of years ago. Uh, so all these things can happen and uh, affect your yields. So you definitely need to have insurance to protect uh, your, your crop uh, or your or livestock. The issue of new and more virulent disease organisms, right? Uh, we now know maybe about uh, this disease that we saw COVID-19 uh, that has wrecked havoc uh, globally, right? So these are the, some of the things that can happen even to your, to your animals or your crops. And uh, you definitely need to have some form of protection so that uh, if you, your crop is affected, then you have uh, some form of security to fall back on. Right. Uh, and uh, the covers available on the market uh, are for a variety of crops. Like I said, the field crops, you can also have your, your livestock, which can be beef or dairy, or bloodstock, the plantations like your teas, your bananas, and so on, aquaculture, your fisheries. Uh, also, horticulture that uh, we have mentioned, other specialist crops found in greenhouses, uh, your, your forestry, uh, crocodiles, right? Even crocodiles, yeah. Some of you may wonder what you'd be sure crocodiles against. Yeah, but we do have policies to, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to, to compensate farmers in the event that uh, they lose. Uh, they are crocodiles. Uh, we insure, there is insurance, like for one of the biggest crocodile farmers in the world, which is uh, uh, which operates from Kariba. They uh, they have a crocodile policy in place as we speak, and uh, they have been compensated where losses have occurred um, due to disease on the crocodiles. The fruits we talked about that. Right. And looking at a global uh, perspective, what contributes most in terms of the in, in the insurance market in terms of the covers? I think we can see that crops form the bulk of the insurance that is uh, available. Uh, then we also have uh, the uh, hail insurance uh, coming second and uh, forestry, livestock, agriculture, and equine, which you also referred to as the bloodstock that we're talking about. Right, so crops form the bulk of the insurance, agriculture insurance that you find in the market. Right, and in terms of uh, uh, losses, you can see that drought and excessive rainfall from this pie chart contributes the most to claims. Uh, then there's frost again. So that's why you find that uh, the premium rates for things like drought and uh, excessive rainfall, excessive moisture tends to be high in the range of maybe 9%, even up to 12% for drought covers, because uh, losses uh, are high, uh, attributable to, 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 to those perils, right? Um, but there are measures that we'll discuss, which we can implement to make sure that those uh, uh, premiums, premium rates will, will come down.
farmers suffer a wide variety of um, you know challenges different from maybe a building which will probably be exposed to just fire uh, and uh, maybe malicious damage to a limited extent but because uh, as farmers we have our crops that are out there in the open for a, an extended length of time uh, it means that those crops are vulnerable to a lot of uh, perils uh, natural risks uh, like hail storms uh, fire frost drought uh, flooding you know heat uh, diseases and so on then you have some social risks uh, someone can uh, light a fire uh, arson uh, burglary or theft uh, you know vandalism and so on then we also have economic risks associated with supply and demand you know with the price if there's a glut in the market then the price will fall uh, if there's a shortage then farmers benefit and the price increases then things like depreciation you know loss of income in the event that something happens to the crop and then the interest char interest charges you know to get loans from banks and the interest can be high, as high as maybe 25 percent per annum and so on which uh, sometimes makes it unviable to grow some of the crops or to to seek uh, you know using funding from banks right and on the farm to protect ourselves against some of these perils there are measures that we can uh, implement uh, which we call on farm risk management we'll discuss uh, some of these because this this is the basis by which we can um, we, we can uh, enjoy favorable you know, uh, premium rate. If we are a farm risk on farm risk management is uh, of a high standard, and uh, we are consistently achieving good results, uh, insurers who adjust premium rates. Uh, if uh, you know you 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 are a good farmer and uh, you are you are very consistent in terms of uh, the the results that you are getting from your operations, yeah, we will be discussing this in more detail. Then, uh, in spite of those uh, measures that we can impl uh, implement on the farm, there will still be those risks that we can do nothing about. Things like hail. Yes, to a limited extent, we can have hail nets depending on the crop and uh, you know the the, uh, the 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 value of the crop, right? But uh, for most of our field crops, uh, there is no protection available other than uh, insurance, right? So. We'll talk about those measures now that we can implement on the farm to make sure that uh, you know we, we get um, uh, favorable premium uh, rates. Right. Uh, it starts with uh, a very deep well drink soils. So if you have on your farm uh, some blaze, uh, rocky outcrops uh you know some very heavy clay soils you need to do a land class right? uh, you find that certain crops do not do well uh, in certain regions of the country uh, if you are growing wheat for example growing wheat in an arid or an arid climate uh, maybe in, in in some areas of material land there you will not get the yields that you'd expect so definitely you need to grow a crop that is suited for the area where, you are where your farm is located. Then issues of uh, timely planting again are very important. Right? If you, we all know that if you plant our wheat late, then it means that instead of planting maybe end of April in May or May, then it means that uh, you know, when the rains, it, it, maybe you plant it end of June, when the rains come in October, that uh, be rained. Right? So you need to plant at the appropriate time uh, whereby you know, your, your crop will perform to, to the optimum. Right? Again, planting your crops too early, uh, especially your wheat or your barley, uh, maybe for some farmers they planted in March. You, it, that means that in the frost, uh, frost season, uh, frost pre period uh, in July, your crop is already flowering. And uh, if uh, there's frost in July or in August, your crop is at the most vulnerable stage, right? And uh, you can suffer losses. So it's good to have uh, to to do your plantings at the optimum uh, optimum time. 
So your land preparation and other cultural practices, like your crop rotation is very important, especially for crops like tomatoes, your tobacco and so on, uh, to control diseases and, uh, and pests. You need to practice crop rotation. Again, insurers will look at that, right? Uh, your land preparation, up, uh, is it up to standard? Again, that is in, uh, important because it affects the crop establishment. If your crop does not, uh, sorry, your land does, is not of, uh, of a fine till after the land preparation, then it means that you, some of your, your, your seeds may fail to germinate. Uh, plant population, again, this is very important because it has a bearing on your yield. If uh, your you, 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 you're growing wheat, for example, you don't just hitch the vicon spreader or your planter and then just run your tractor all across the field. You have to make sure that uh, as you are planting, you are dropping enough uh, seeds per unit area. Some of us uh, use uh, quadrats, which can be uh, maybe 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters, or one meter by one meter. And actually, as we vicon on our seed, we check the, the, the population of the seed uh, in, the, in the square meter to make sure that we are meeting the targets because that will influence our yield. If we are growing tobacco, uh, after planting, you then go back after a few days to make sure that all your plants have, um, have, have established and you do what is called gap filling uh, in the event that some of the plants have died, all for the purpose of making sure that your population is up to uh, the required uh, levels to get the optimum yield uh, from, from, from that crop. The quality and adequacy of required resources like labor uh, for the crop that you are growing, if you're growing peas, for example, which is a high labor demand, you need to make sure that your labor is there uh, of, of the appropriate skills, right? Otherwise your crop will maybe over ripen in the fields and then you won't be able to sell it. But, um, because you shortage of people to pick it when it matures. The fertilizers and chemicals should all be there uh, sure that, uh, uh, you know, in the event that uh, a pest uh, is, 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 is enters your fields, uh, you fall arm and so on, you have the right chemicals to control. Then uh, your equipment and also your buildings for, for the enterprise that you are, uh, you are into. If it's tobacco, your bands should be there and of weed, pest and disease control. That is very important. A claim can be repudiated on the grounds that there are too many weeds in the crop. If it's tobacco and it's heavily infested with weeds, then definitely, if, uh, if you know a suffer as out of maybe hail and so on, and the assessors come and they see that uh, they are more weeds than crop in your fields, uh, that can create problems for you. So you need to make sure that your crop is clean. Uh, the fire prevention and control, right? Your fire guards, right? This should be of the right, you know, of, of the appropriate uh, width. Uh, minimum five meters and can be as uh, as wide as 30 meters if your, uh, your field is like uh, 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 plantations, maybe uh, gum or, or, or water plantations, then you need to make sure that you have a, a wider fire guard uh, in the event that fire happens in the, in the bush or in, in the uh, gum plantation, then it's not going to uh, spread to your wheat crop. Right. Uh, then also harvesting and post-harvesting, harvest process man processing management. Uh, that's very important whether your crop is perishable or non-perishable. It's perishable. What uh, measures post-harvest are there to make sure that, you know, it gets to the market before it is deteriorated? Yeah, because insurers will be concerned if, uh, if for example, you are growing for me then feel as my crop is insured so I should claim 
that when in fact the loss has not resulted from an insured peril, it's a, man, a management or husband related loss, which is no, may, may not be covered by insurance. Farm records are also very important. When you approach insurers seeking insurance, they will ask for this. What has been your production history? What have been, has been your loss history, right? This should be able to, this should be available uh, for the insurers to be able to assess uh, the quality of the of of uh, of, uh, your, of the risk. Remember, I talked about consistency uh, in, in results in terms of your yields uh, is very important, and the level of the yields that you attain uh, they should be consistent with uh, you know uh, the the crop uh, variety that you are growing and the expected yields for that variety. Uh, you can also invest in lower risk enterprises uh, to just make sure that you know the chance of getting suffering a loss diminishes. Uh, you can uh, do enterprise diversification, have poultry uh, as well as your crop. Or some farmers now will also have you know uh, livestock, uh, so that when they are rotating their fields, uh, they put in a grass. Uh, just to break the life cycle of them, uh, cattle to graze, uh, they, uh, they make uh, sometimes they make hay and sell to other farmers with livestock. So that diversification is important uh, uh, as a risk management tool on the farm. Maintaining relatively low debt to asset ratios, um, adequate financial reserves, right? In the, in the event of an emergency, your tractor breaks down or your pump breaks down. We should have some reserves to, to you know to be able to uh, you know uh, do the repairs uh, in time before your crop is affected. Uh, developing all farm sources of income, yes, that may apply to some individuals, right? And uh, what kind of uh, uh, covers are available, right? There is the traditional insurance, which is called indemnity insurance, where you are agreeing with the insurer that I want to be insured up to this level per hectare, right? And in the event that you lose your crop, you are paid up to the level that you have agreed with the insurer. That is the traditional uh, form of insurance. And uh, it can apply for single risks like your tobacco, hail and windstorm, right? Or it can uh, uh, apply to, uh, uh, you know, multiple risks where you like your multi peril crop insurance where in addition to the hail and windstorm you are also covered for fire for flooding for malicious damage you know non-political riot and so on even uh, stray animals grazing your crop you are covered for, the, for that right uh, even wind drift uh, yeah in the, someone is spraying and a, a neighbor is spraying and then uh, uh, maybe the herbicide and then the drift uh, affect your, 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 your crop, uh, they, they will be uh, covered for that. Then the uh, non-traditional form is index insurance, right? Where you, you are compensated based on a proxy, which can be a rainfall or temperature that is measured in a, uh, you know, at a remote place or a, such as a weather station away from your farm, right? And um, again, this uh, may be useful, especially for us in Zimbabwe with uh, you know, our communal farmers uh, who are the bulk of the farmers that we have in the country where it may not be feasible to, to be visiting these farmers, uh, conducting uh, assessments in the event that uh, maybe there's a loss, um, which can be drought or maybe excessive rainfall. So these index insurance products will be suited for those categories of, of, of farmers. Right. So our crop insurance will cover uh, things like hail, drought, flood, frost, a storm, excessive rainfall, like we have mentioned. Right. Um, uh, your, your, your windstorm or atmospheric disturbance, um, lightning, right, uh, can happen and affect your crop. Um, uh, your frost. Uh, I think uh, here, when we, we talk about frost, what can we do to make sure that our crop is protected from frost? We know sometimes that uh, when we irrigate our lands, uh, you know, when we anticipate that there is frost or it has been forecast that there's going to be frost, if you irrigate your crop and uh, there's high moisture levels in the field, that reduces the chance of damage of the crop. 
Right, so those are some of the uh, you know risk management measures that can be implemented to reduce because whilst insurance is there, it may not compensate you to the level that you would have achieved uh, if you had uh, you know managed uh, the crop to to avoid frost. Uh, you can be insured for six tons, for example, per hectare for your wheat crop, and the potential for your fields is eight tons. So it's always important to be able to manage your crop so that you you attain the highest possible yield, uh, which will definitely uh, be worth more uh, than if you, uh, uh, than what would have been insured or what can be insured by your insurers. Rainstorm, flooding, drought, yes, there are products for that. Although of course, like as we say, it's expensive, damage by birds or animals, depending on the crop, yes, that may be available as well. Uh, malicious damage, convulsions of nature, landslides, and so on, uh, earthquakes, covers for that are available as well. Uh, pests that will again vary with crop and also the level of husband on the farm. Right? So farmers, are still, you know, insurers assess, uh, you know, the level of the preventative um, measures that you are imp implementing on the farm and may award you this cover or may not, depending on how well you are managing your crop. And also diseases, I think we've talked about that. Uh, Non-political riot and strike, explosions, qualified theft, right? Which when we, do, uh, by definition, theft should be uh, by, you know, uh, there should be evidence of uh, some use of force, all right? That's, why, that's what we mean when we say uh, qualified theft. Spray drift, we've talked about that. Damage by spray, spray kettle, stray kettle, sorry, uh, and wildlife, depending on the crop and storage and transit risks like your hijack and so on may also be covered. Right, in the event that uh, you suffer loss uh, during the early part of the season, right? You have just planted uh, uh, and then one or two weeks later, uh, something happens. Your crop is just emerging or it's in the early vegetative stages. Uh, crops, uh, sorry, insurers will, will pay you what is called a replanting subsidy. Uh, to help you reestablish the crop, right? Uh, all your in, uh, inputs uh, and your seed and so on, you, you'll be compensated for that, right? And then you reestablish the crop, which continues to be insured, and there is no excess that will be applied uh, on that claim. This is just a guide, um, right, of uh, the levels of premiums uh, that uh, you, will, you, you, you will be charged uh, depending on, on the crop. But what I want to emphasize here in the, the, what's written in red there is that the premium rate is what is called the loss rate plus the administration expenses that will be borne by the insurer and uh, added to that will be the reserve loading. Right? A reserve loading is uh, you know th that pool that we heard from the video that is set aside to be available in the event of that one of the farmers who are insured uh, under the policy suffers uh, a loss, right? So the loss rate here uh, is what is important. Remember we said most of us farmers feel that, uh, you know, our ins insurance uh, for certain perils, especially drought, uh, you know, excessive rainfall, which I said can be in the region of 10%, is expensive. Why is it expensive? It's because of the loss rate, right, which has been high. I think uh, they, in that one of the pie charts that I showed you, I also indicated that there are more losses as a result of some of these periods. So hail, you know, excessive rainfall, your drought, right? But there is also a human element associated with that. Uh, for, for frost, I think I, I talked about, you know, irrigating the crop, to limit the chances of it being damaged by frost. So because sometimes, or some of us farmers are not practicing the good, you know, the husbandry, uh, good crop husbandry, uh, that is expected to be able to minimize the chance of loss. Yes, whilst the frost will okay, but because some farmers maybe are not irrigating adequately, and then that leaves the crop vulnerable to frost. It means that the chance or the probability of suffering loss increases. Uh, for some of the farmers. And this, if you, if you then consider the total number of losses, uh, the total value of your crop that would have been insured for, uh, for that season, 
then you then get a high loss rate, which could be managed if some if uh, some of those farmers were irrigating the crop properly and so on. So our loss rate is also influenced by husbandry, which then increases the, uh, you know the, the the those loss rates. And then if you uh, add on uh, the, these uh, uh, other expenses and reserve loading, you end up with a high premium rate. So we are saying as farmers, uh, we can influence the premiums that uh, we, we are charged by managing our losses uh, uh, or our crops to, to, to minimize the chance uh, of loss. Even fire, right? It may be a wildfire, but if your fire guards are not uh, you, you have your maybe the, the right uh, width of fire guard, but there are there's some debris there which is flammable on on the fire fire guard, and it means that uh, yes, the, the 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 claim will be paid because there was a fire guard, but maybe the fire guard was not of the right of the appropriate standard to be able to prevent the fire uh, from uh, spreading onto your crop. So again, that's the human element that we are talking about. But as a farmer, as an individual farmer, if you are doing everything properly and you have been consistently getting results, uh, uh, you know, in terms of the yield, uh, if it's wheat, you have been getting in the region of nine, ton nine tons per hectare, 10 tons per hectare, and not six tons or five tons or four tons, then, and you are achieving these yields consistently, then it means that when the assessors uh, or the insurers come and assess your crop, then they, uh, they, they, they view it as a good risk. And then they, you will not charge the standard rate, which has incorporated the elements of husbandry, you know, uh, that uh, will, will be um, charged on others. So your loss, your, your, your will, not go into, uh, will not go into detail here. These this are just a guide, like I'm saying, uh, how you are managing your crop yourself on the farm or your livestock one will influence uh, your, your, the premium rates that you are going to be charged. If it's livestock, uh, you are vaccinating your animals, you are dipping your animals to, to, to control ticks, you, suffer, you don't suffer, you know, the prevalence of these tick-borne diseases is very low, then it means that you are going to have a low mortality. And low mortality means that on your farm, your loss rate is very low, right? So even when the insurers then load for the expenses and the reserve, you will still have a premium rate that would be lower than the average farm uh, because of the good uh, husband or your farm. But I think uh, here we are, we've already explained uh, livestock um, and the periods are, uh, for livestock is mainly mortality, which is death due to accident or disease, which is covered. By accident, what do we mean? Right, so the definition of accidents for insurance purposes is an unexpected and unintended event causing death of an animal by a violent accidental, external and visible means, right? So it's a, something that is unintended and accidental. But if you have a beef enterprise and then you are harnessing your, your animals maybe to draw a, a cart or a plow, and then maybe during uh, some activity, your animal uh, gets strangulated. If the, the insurer can then say you, the use to which you are putting the animal is not uh, the intended use, because in your proposal form, you have mentioned that this is a beef animal, right? It's not a draft animal, right? And uh, your, your claim can be repudiated on that uh, basis, right? So you know, we, we need to be clear here that when, we, when it's, uh, we're ensuring beef or dairy animals, it's just for beef or dairy uh, that we're, use, we, we're using the animals uh, for. But uh, your accidents may extend to death due to surgical operations, uh, breeding or parturition, uh, you know, dystocia or cow losses, as well as total disability, such as incapacity to conceive, especially for high, you know, high value uh, breeding stock, right? your, your, your blood stock that uh, we mentioned earlier. 
right? Uh, that can also be covered. Uh, but uh, your extents are not variations in production efficiency, like maybe your 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 egg, uh, your 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 egg uh, production diminishes uh, because maybe there has been uh, some some disease in the flock. The loss in uh, production is not what will be covered. It will be the mortality of uh, the base themselves, and also consequential consequential loss is not uh, be covered. Some more examples of accidents in livestock, uh, right to strike, electrofusion, snake bites uh, will be covered, right? Uh, wildlife attacks, uh, strangulation, again, it depends uh, on the use to which your animal is, uh, is being put and how the strangulation happens, which will determine whether that uh, claim will be paid or not. Food poisoning also, uh, depending on whether you're practicing zero grazing or not, uh, if it's uh, maybe food poisoning out in the pasture uh, as a result of a poisonous plant and so on, that it may be a different, uh, you know, issue to if it's a zero grazing and you are buying in uh, your uh, from then what you ensure you to get compensation that may not be covered depending on uh, you know the um, um, how you are managing your your your, your crop this sorry your livestock whether it's um, uh, fattening or zero grazing and so on and you are using protein feed or not. Uh, the gave is not able to deliver normal. And uh, there are complications, but uh, that will then be classified. Uh, 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 to explain that in the policy, uh, due to surgical operations are covered when performed by someone who's qualified uh, to perform those uh, operations. Right? Again, that's one of the conditions on the policy. Emergency slaughter on main grounds um, is covered, right? Uh, if it, uh, it is certified by a qualified veterinarian who will then recognize that this condition cannot be covered, including uh, what are called those uh, epidemic diseases, you know, your, your foot and mouth, and anthrax, and so on those will all be covered. So this is, we'll just run down some of these diseases, uh, rabies, foot and mouth. But uh, for these diseases to be covered, those diseases which should be vaccinated against have to be vaccinated against, right? Uh, and uh, they, a record of the vaccinations should be kept on the farm. I have learned years to have our children vaccinated against things like polio, measles, hepatitis, tetanus, and so on. Right, and a lot of measles, uh, you know, is uh, experienced when uh, humans suffer from these uh, calamities. Uh, by the same token, I think we should also be concerned about our animals. Uh, to make sure that, you know, where we need to vaccinate against foot and mouth, anthrax and so on. We are doing that because, again, these are living organisms and do suffer pain, uh, even if they eventually recover from foot and mouth. But it's a lot of, it's uh, so much trauma for the animal, uh, right? And it's uh, very important that we uh, vaccinate for those diseases that have to be vaccinated against. And where we cannot produce proof that we have, have uh, carried out the necessary vaccinations, 
uh, our claims may not be paid by the insurer. And for one other important point is that for some of, some of the diseases to, diseases to be covered, uh, you know, uh, there is a waiting period, which can be between 14 days and as, uh, as many as 90 days, especially where we are bringing in stock from, from, from outside. Maybe we have bought our animals from a neighboring farm uh, or from another district, then we have to quarantine there and make sure that they are free from disease. And this quarantine period can be up to 30 days for locally acquired stock and up to 90 days for imported uh, or foreign bred animals. Again, the premium rates here are just a guide. Like I explained, uh, these uh, guides are based on averages. And our averages, we have said, incorporate an element of husbandry which has increased loss rates, right? But where as a farmer on your farm, your loss rate is low, then definitely uh, your, your insurance premium should be commensurate with the loss rate that you're experiencing on the farm. So again, I'm, uh, I have to emphasize, it is important for us to manage our stock um, properly and protect them against um, some of these diseases, which can be, be easily controlled. Uh, like your tick-borne diseases, your heart water, you know, gout sickness, the January disease, and so on. These can be avoided if we are dipping our chemical our animals, and also uh, we we have we keep stocks of some broad spectrum antibiotic. Remember, we talked about on-farm risk management, including having adequate stocks of the necessary, you know, uh, indispensable chemicals that you, you definitely uh, may be called upon to use on your farm. So that all that it will improve the quality of the risk of your risk. And uh, you can negotiate with insurers for a much uh, lower premium than these averages uh, that I, I'm giving you. Coming to tobacco, but uh, uh, we have already, um, you know, discussed the values involved and the chance of, uh, you know, the experiencing a catastrophic loss um, in the event that, uh, you know, uh, this crop is uh, affected by hail or windstorm and so on. So these are the major perils that will be covered, your hail and windstorm, your burn fires, right, and even fires during storage and uh, hijacking or transit risks, accidents and so on. Then we also have the food to flow cover, right? Uh, uh, which in addition to some other perils not covered by the hail and windstorm policies, like your lightning, your flooding and so on, uh, you, 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 your food to flow will cover that as well as the, your transit storage and uh, processing, you, you know, your curing, um, the, the, the accidents that can happen during curing, uh, where fires can destroy your crop. The basis of cover can be input cost or yield, right? So your input cost will be agreed with the insurer uh, and uh, a value will be attached. And uh, for the input cost cover, usually there is no excess, right? You are paid the full value of the loss without any deductions, right? Um, uh, what is with the, your yield cover? There will be deductions for, for, for savings that will not be incurred. Like uh, your crop in the field suffers hail damage uh, and um, you have not harvested, so you have not incurred any harvesting expenses or processing or grading expenses, any transport and so on. So those will be deducted from the value of the crop lost, right? But uh, the advantage of the yield covered but it will be that it will also include, include the, an element of profit then. Uh, so your compensation may be higher than for the uh, input cost cover. The insurance period will be um, from the time of planting, time of seeding, if it's a nest, you are also you know, insuring your nursery 
or it will kick in at a certain date, but it's usually three weeks after transplanting uh, for your tobacco. And then your insurance will end uh, either at harvest, if it's only a hail and windstorm policy, um, or, and or after the final loss adjustment. But if you're also covered for the field to flow, then the sales closing date will be uh, the period when the policy uh, ends. But these are examples of the rates that can be charged um, uh, for your tobacco crop. Normally between 6% and 8% and the applicable excesses are as given. Right? And these will normally be applied for hail and windstorm. They will be applied to the total area affected right? uh, by the uh, hail strike. And uh, compensation will be uh, subject to the farmer having paid his premium for that period. They are the period uh, they be through stop order but nowadays because of uh, you know the the cost of administering administering insurance especially involving the field visits and so on uh, you, you at the minimum may need to pay some deposit premium uh, for inception of cup and then the balance will be paid uh, in the intervening period uh, before conclusion of sales. Your premium rates may be also subject to a no claim uh, claims bonus, right? Uh, which is uh, normally 10% uh, on the premium rate annually up to a maximum of uh, 60%, which means that over six years, if you are not claiming, you can end up paying 40% of the original premium that we were charged. And these uh, no claim bonuses are transferable, which means that if you, if you change insurers, you can move with your no claim bonus. Then uh, upon, a, uh, upon a claim being lodged, uh, the NCB may fall away or uh, drop down by some steps, depending on the loss ratio. Uh, that would have uh, been experienced for that season. The loss ratio being uh, the value of the claim divided by the premium amount that you have been paid. Your policies will also have what is called a key main insurance, that is an add-on. This will cover the principal member or permanent disability. Right. And it's subject to document statements from the contractor of the amounts that you know. Okay, uh, thank you very much there, John, for uh, the great uh, presentation. Uh, we do appreciate, um, it was indeed uh, a great presentation. You covered key issues there, uh, and we can see from the comments here that farmers really appreciate the information that you uh, have shared. And it is true that, you know, information is power, is, it can help us farmers make informed decisions uh, and even yet sometimes to see opportunities that uh, we would have been uh, missing. So we do have a number of questions. 
uh, and comments from our farmers. Uh, John, just, just to confirm, are you still there? Uh, yes, uh, I think the connection had been lost momentarily there. Uh, yes, but I'm here. You can ah, all hear okay. me, I hope. Okay, it's all right. So maybe because of our time, we'll just uh, uh, take a few questions and comments before we end uh, the meeting. And some of the comments here uh, said situations that uh, farmers faced in the past season. Uh, we have Clyde Murombez here commenting that uh, he lost a 250,000 combined harvester uh, from uh, uh, bent to ashes in the field. So he lost a combined harvester from fire. Uh, then another experience uh, here is uh, in 2021, in 2020, I grew close a half a hectare of green, uh, green peas. Little did I know that it's an elite crop meaning it's not consumed by the majority. I was stuck with my harvest. I offloaded it almost for nothing. I tried exploring various markets, but the sales were so low that uh, even in supermarkets, eventually I accepted the defeat. I left the peas to dry. I planned to sell the peas a seed, but there was no breakthrough. I only got uh, promises. I hope to crush, to crush it one day into chicken feed. I told myself not to do green fist piece again. Through research, I'm now learning that there is a vast ex export market for peas. For starters, I think it's better that we focus on some uh, common crops with time, uh, then try export market. I really wish I had insured my uh, crop. Then another one here is saying, is uh, Colin Nyakabau. He says, we did spinach with my brother and the timing of the season was bad. We couldn't get the market. Second, we did, uh, we, we did onions and cabbage. They didn't do well at all. Then third, thirdly, we did tomatoes, 3,500 plants and a fungal disease attack and it was uncontrollable. Then fourth, we did 6,500 plants of tomatoes and health storm destroyed everything to the to the ground. We replanted again 6,500 plants. Uh, they did well, but almost attacked by fungal disease. And the market price was uh, very good at that uh, time as the, product, the product was on demand. Then uh, there are a lot of comments here. Uh, I'll, I'll take the last uh, comment here saying, uh, is Niashe says, uh, I am going through a serious loss right now. I don't know how to move with a farm full of cabbages that didn't come out well. I only managed to sell a few, not even close to a quarter of what's in the field. Guys, how can I move on? What can I do with these small little cabbages? Because at the moment, the market is flooded and no one really wants to buy such small cabbages. How do, my, how do I move on? Okay, so these are some of the comments uh, that we uh, have been receiving and some were received prior to this uh, webinar. So on the questions, we'll take only two uh, because of our time. The first one says, what disqualifies a farmer from being insured? Okay, um, yeah, the, the, the question, first of all, maybe if I may just comment on uh, the other farmers who talked about, uh, you know, the, the you know, cabbages and uh, green peas not uh, fetching the prices that they had budgeted for. But there is a product called revenue insurance, right? And uh, remember at the beginning, I explained that uh, where you get consistent results in terms of your yield, you are managing your crop to a high level and you are consistently getting high yields, then uh, you, you, you are, you, you are uh, a candidate for what is called revenue insurance. Right? And uh, whilst the premium rate tends to be slightly higher than your, your normal multiple, that revenue insurance will have a price element which is fixed. So you, in, in addition to the yield, the price is also fixed. So in the event that on the market, your price is low, uh, your, your, your policy will compensate uh, for, for that difference uh, in price. So even if your cabbages uh, are small and you have floated them, uh, of course they have to be small because the variety maybe is of 
for uh, of a small size, not because of the husband related issues, right? Um, then again, you are compensated for the difference because insurance will not cover, you know, the, the husband related, maybe you are not irrigating your cabbages adequately and then they did not go to the expected size, right? So th that's about that. Then in terms of disqualification, uh, what normally disqualifies uh, a, a, a farmer is uh, what is called moral hazard, right? Uh, normally insurers will not touch anyone, uh, you know, any crop that uh, has a moral hazard element. Uh, moral husband can be uh, because maybe the farmer um, uh, has, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it detailed knowledge about insurance, uh, they know if they agree to say, I, will, I want to insure at this level and uh, the insurers accept uh, and that level has never been attained on the farm, right? Uh, if uh, the research is done and uh, it's uh, established that uh, the farmer is wants to insure at those high levels because uh, they anticipate that uh, they, 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 they may be, you know, some form of damage or they, they, they may deliberately intend to, to cause loss, maybe through a fire and so on, then uh, that uh, farmer may uh, not be insured. Or maybe from past uh, experiences with the same farmer, there have been these issues of moral hazard, then uh, insurers may not be interested to insure uh, that farm. And also th that's uh, to do with moral husband and husbandry. Uh, but also an issue where, you know, the crop is located in an area where it's bound not to perform. Again, uh, I think we explained the issue of location. You, you need to grow your crop in an area where it's likely to do well. So if your crop like tomatoes is grown in a valley area, and we know that tomatoes or potatoes require very deep, well-drained soils. So if it's in a flood plain, then definitely uh, your crop will be exposed to you know, uh, the flooding and so on. So that will disqualify that crop um, from, you know, from being insured. Okay, uh, great. Uh, thank you for taking uh, that one. Then we have uh, Bright Macon here uh, saying, um, great presentation. Are you going to share the presentation or recording? Yes, Bright, uh, we have recorded the webinar and we will share the recorded version in the next few days. Then uh, you continue to say, what is your advice to small scale farmers? There's always the talk of small scale and value, which they say should justify one getting insurance. Uh, what's your take? Okay, so on that one, uh, Bright, I believe that uh, any farm, small or large, is the capacity to be a productive unit. And the more we invest in our units, the more potential it can to be profitable. So uh, converting or making that farm into a profitable farm business really requires uh, investment. Uh, and uh, as long as that investment is available, and the investment that we're talking about can come in the form of seeds and fertilizers and um, issues to do with irrigation and other uh, modern technologies of, or, or ways of, of doing things. So uh, depending on how much you uh, would have invested in that farm, um, surely regardless of the size, uh, you will definitely need uh, agricultural in, uh, insurance. I don't know if uh, John, you can add more on that one. Uh, yes, I, I think ideally, uh, if you are your, the units are small, um, you, you need to maybe organize yourself into a, yourselves into a group, right? Uh, so that, uh, you know, the, the economies of scale for the insurer, uh, for the visits that may need to be conducted to assess the crop and so on, right? Uh, so yes, um, depending on whether you are, growing the crop as individuals or you are in a scheme. If you are in a scheme, you are contracted, then that's not a problem because the volumes are already there. But if you are an individual approaching insurer to seek insurance for maybe if it's a, a livestock, you have your five beasts on your farm, right? And you are in uh, maybe Mtora Shanga or some distant place, 
uh, away from where the insurer uh, is offices uh, are or the, where the insurer is based. Then it may not it make economic sense for the insurer to administer your policy. But uh, if you can then uh, aggregate or uh, mobilize other farmers in the area to work with you, uh, and uh, there are 50 head of uh, animals in the area, then maybe it may then make economic sense for the farmer to come and visit and, uh, uh, and, and assess the crop and give you a policy as a group. Okay, uh, thanks uh, again, John. Then um, lastly, uh, a follow-up question from uh, Bright McCon. Uh, okay, no, it's a separate one from him, saying which insurance companies are offering index insurance? Okay, uh, we have uh, Old Mutual uh, at the moment with an index product. Uh, we have in the past also uh, had uh, Zimnat uh, offering one at the moment. We have Nikos Diamond also working on one. Yes, so, so these are policies that will uh, be more readily available in the, in, 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 the, in the short to medium term because we have insurance companies currently working on that. Yeah, so at the moment, we only have one insurer who's offering this product and it's all insurer. Okay, uh, thank you very much for taking uh, that one. Uh, then, um, Patrick, uh, over to you. I think we are done with the question and answer uh, session. Thank you. Okay, uh, seems uh, we are having some connectivity challenges there. We would like to take this opportunity to thank you all farmers for uh, attending this uh, webinar where we were discussing uh, the uh, issues to do with agriculture insurance and many thanks to our special rulings. Hi, hi Patrick. Ah, okay, all right. Oh, sorry about that. It seems to have been one of those mornings in terms of uh, technical difficulties. Yeah, sure, um, sure. Yeah, just let me thank you for uh, stepping in there uh, and uh, managing the uh, Q&A so ably. Uh, we appreciate that. And so uh, gratifying to know that our farmers are finding uh, use in all this advice that's coming from people who are clearly experienced and have gone there before. You know, there's a saying throughout history that if you want to go in a particular direction, speak to somebody who has traveled that road. And clearly, John, you have traveled uh, the route of the farmer, you've made the mistakes, and you've been able to share your experiences and put into context the use of insurance for everybody to understand this is what is key. And what I find so inspiring and motivating about having these guests is that you show us that if as much as we can uh, improve our machinery, if we cannot invest in ourselves as people to improve our understanding and our capability and improve our skill, nothing else is going to change. So from that point of view, I just wish to thank you, John, for your uh, delivery. And uh, uh, thank you most sincerely for the preparation you have so clearly put into it. Uh, and to everybody else, we want to remind you at this point before we sign off, that um, all of what you've been hearing and listening to has been brought to you by the Insurance Council of Zimbabwe in collaboration with Agri Business Media. So we thank our two actors uh, and for making this possible because it will continue uh, because we need to deepen our knowledge. Nothing else will get better until we get better. What do you think about that, John? Uh, definitely. Yeah, we, we definitely need to invest more in, you know, in developing ourselves and our understanding and also striving to make sure that, uh, you know, uh, we manage our crops to get the highest possible yields and consistently get those yields so that when we approach insurers, we are able to get, uh, you know, discounted premiums because we are showing uh, the insurer that we are capable, we know what we are doing and uh, we can uh, achieve the results. 
Absolutely. And again, you know, um, it may be useful coming back to you, Rawlings, uh, to, to remind our audience all the time that, you know, human beings simply don't change until they come into contact with new information. So whatever we are doing, I think it's a worthy investment to make an hour where we just hear new information that's out there that could impact what we are trying to achieve. So Rawlings, I think, uh, thank you again uh, for your input and uh, keeping us connected to the farming community. And uh, we, we sense a sweeping change in our country, a new excitement, a recognition that things are truly in our own hands. So thank you, Rawlings. And uh, that's all I have to say for now. I don't know if you have anything else at the moment. Well, thank you so much, uh, Patrick. Uh, nothing much from me, just to thank everyone who has uh, attended and participated uh, in this uh, webinar. And uh, like you said, information is power. And uh, we know it goes a long way in helping farmers make uh, informed uh, farm business uh, decisions. So uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, until next time, we wish you the best on your uh, farm businesses. Wonderful. And thank you to Brand Africa Project, uh, Audra, Wilson Max, thank you for your input. Uh, I know that uh, managing this platform and everything else that goes with it is uh, not easy. Um, it is a lot of heavy lifting and uh, we got through today. Thank goodness for that. And there are uh, there is an audience out there that appreciates what you are doing. So thank you. And we look forward to the next one. Thank you, everybody. And uh, have a great day. Thank you.